All right, so this is my third time trying to record this video. So third time's a charm. Hopefully this is what I upload. Um, basically, Manjaro Cutefish version 0.4 was recently released. This is a developer unstable version, but it's still a really cool project, really cool desktop environment. Uh, essentially, it is a clone of Mac OS X, and overall it's beautiful and it functions pretty well, for especially for being a developer version. Now, I'm recording this on a laptop for a uh, number of reasons, but one of the primary reasons is I wanted to check out their uh, battery optimization thing, which is something they added. Uh, you could apparently switch between the performance mode and the power saving mode, so we're going to go ahead and check that out in settings. Additionally, Global menus, global menus are here. Uh, you can see here on the screen recording real quick that it's working pretty well with OBS Studio. If I go under file, I have all of those. View, profile settings, so just like how Mac OS X natively works. So that is something that's new out of the gate. Additionally, there's some uh, mouse uh, settings and changes so you can switch between uh, left and right mouse, which basically switches the uh, buttons on the mouse. They have native scrolling. And a couple other things, I'm not going to cover every single thing that is new, but I will link down below to the release notes for version 0.3 and 0.4, because last time we went and took a look at this, it was on version 0.2. So with all that said, let's dive on to our system and check it out. Uh, you can kind of see I already have it moderately customized and configured. And that's because I, I just recorded on this laptop, but the uh, video ended up being like really flickery halfway through. So it, it basically unusable. So this is, really isn't first impressions because I've been through everything before. So with that said, let's go ahead and check it out. First thing first and what most people were or seem to have been most interested in were those global menus specifically. You just saw here with OBS it working fairly well. All the menu items that would have been integrated natively with OBS are natively within that new global menu. And this is a hit or miss depending on the actual application and whether if the application uses like GTK, Q, or whatever. Because I noticed um, Qfish is heavily based off of KDE Plasma and all the KDE Plasma applications with that global menu are working out out of the gate, including their native applications. For example, if I open up their file browser here, you can see the global menu is there. We have file, edit, and help. In an example of a KDE application that is working is uh, Caden Live right here. If I go ahead and open up Caden Live, you can see the global menu is integrated very well within Caden Live. I go under View, Project, and you can see it, instead of going down the list further, it goes ahead and just gives you a whole nother column here with your global menu settings. So if I go ahead and close that out and show you an example of it not working, that would be one in GIMP. The global menu currently doesn't work. You can see it's kind of wasting space instead of having all of this stuff up here. We have the title bar and then the menu and then the application. So hit or miss, it's still an alpha early software. So hopefully as they move forward, they're able to integrate that in other applications. But with that out of the way, what we're gonna do is actually go ahead and go through the settings here. We're gonna run through all the settings and I'm gonna point out some things that are new while we go ahead and run through this. Uh, I have my Wi-Fi currently disabled because it was not working, so that's why I'm using a... I have this plugged into an internet cable. And I tried this on two different laptops and it didn't work for either of them, so I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. But it is running the 5.13 kernel. This is an older device, so it might be something to do with that. But I'm not 100% sure quite yet. Ethernet connection is set up and working fine. Under display, we have our brightness settings here, as well as our resolution, refresh rate, the orientation, and you can set your scaling here up to 200%. Under appearance, this is where people are probably gonna be spending a lot of time. So we could go ahead and choose in between our light and dark theme here. And then you have your accent colors. You can dim the wallpaper on the dark theme, so this is pretty cool. And one place you could go ahead and change between light and dark theme as well, so if you go up here and you click on your battery volume indicator and all that, you could go ahead and switch between light and dark mode here. So if I give that a tap, you can see it brightens up both my wallpaper and changes to the white theme. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it in dark mode, uh, go back to our settings and disable the dim wallpaper effect. 
So from there we have some basic font stuff. You could change your general fixed font, change your font size, things like that. We have our background, so you can see I'm using a different background than what's the default. This is the default. It's a little bit too blue for me. I kind of actually like this uh, pastel blush type pink color background, but it does come with a lot of absolutely beautiful wallpapers, including this one, which I think is from Windows, but I'm not 100% sure on that. And I believe this was their original background right here. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to this kind of pastel-y color one, and then go to Dock. And this is something that's new. They have the auto hide on the dock, so you get to set it to always show or auto hide. So then the dock will be invisible until you go ahead and take your cursor down and it will slide up. So that's very helpful, especially if you need more uh, screen real estate, that will give you that extra like inch of space depending on what your resolution is. For now, I'm gonna keep it on always show. Obviously we could change the size of our dock from small, medium, all the way up to huge. And if we go down here, we have some basic user control stuff, and then we have mouse. They added some mouse themes. You can see they're using breeze stuff as well as this one. If we change our pointer speed, switch between left hand and right hand mode, and then we have natural scrolling. Uh, I do warn you, like I said earlier, it switches the buttons. So if you do switch to left hand mode, uh, right click is now left click. So to get back, you have to right click on it. Uh, under time and date here, you have your auto sync and time zone. Language, typical language settings. Uh, battery, very beautiful battery page. You can see it says I'm 100% fully charged. It says my battery health is poor and I do wish it would give me a little bit more information on uh, why it gave me that rating. Uh, I know why this laptop is uh, was released when I graduated high school, like six years ago. Um, so that's why this battery is poor. Uh, we could show the percentage up there if you would like to and it gives us our fully charged, which it don't, I don't believe it's fully charged because I haven't plugged it in in a little bit, so I hope it doesn't die soon. <laughs> uh, power, we have performance and power save mode, so this is something that's new. Uh, again, it doesn't really say what it's doing or changing, so it'd be really nice if there was some more information in this panel on specifically what it is actually doing. That would be very helpful. And then if I go down here to about, we could get some information on our system. It is version 0.4 running the 5.13 kernel. And then we have some other information on my actual system. So with that said, let's check out, check out some of the native applications. It doesn't really come with too many. We saw the file manager here. It's an absolutely beautiful file manager. You can see all my recordings here. You can see the basic theming. If I go ahead and do a quick jump between light and dark, you can kind of see the differences. Uh, but it, it works good. If I go up here, I can do quick navigation to specific directories. Has these typical functionalities you'd expect. Right click, you have open and terminal, properties, new folder, all that fun stuff. Additionally, we have a calculator here, which I'm pretty sure is a borderline direct clone from the uh, Windows 10 calculator. So close that out. Uh, we have Pamac, which this isn't a cute fish thing. This is a Manjaro thing. If that wants to open. Oh no, things aren't opening or it's lagging. It's lagging. Okay, I need to stop clicking. That's my issue. Uh, this is Pamac. Absolutely beautiful package manager. Uh, if I go ahead and open up Launcher here, uh, we have Kate. Kate is another one of those applications that works uh, very well with the global menu. You can see it integrate perfectly. Uh, that was included. The things that were not included on this system out of everything you're seeing is from Simple Screen Recorder over. This is what didn't this didn't really work for me, but uh, none of this was included out of the gate. So it was just this these two rows of applications, including the firewall, uh, PDF viewer, Bluetooth manager. Which if I go ahead uh, and go over here, that is Blue Man is how they're managing their Bluetooth. Uh, they have console and terminal, so this is the native terminal application. One thing I noticed earlier is if I try to grab the top bar in this blank space, it tries to manipulate or uh, manage the tabs. So I have to like go over here and click and drag that way. Let's go ahead and open up NeoFetch. We are running ZSH for our shell and it is using the KWin window manager. I'd open up HTOP, but I'm running OBS, so that's not really gonna give us an accurate idea. But essentially, that is what is new in Manjaro Cutefish. Uh, if you guys are interested in checking it out, it's not the uh, easiest to go ahead and download. You gotta uh, download, I'll leave information down 
in the uh, description below but essentially you have to download a couple different files to go ahead and actually extract it and then you'll have the ISO and then you can do whatever you want with it from there. But with all that said, I would like to thank our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. Thank you, Mitchell Valentino, for being an executive level supporter. It means a lot to me. Additionally, we have three producers. We have Timo, Anthony, uh, Phil Mack, and Kyle. Thank you all so much. It is truly humbling. And thank you to all the other Techie and Techie Plus members for supporting the channel. If you'd like to support the channel, there'll be a link to Patreon down in the description. Otherwise, you could just click the YouTube join button down below, and if you do it that way, you'll get extra emojis, badges, things like that. Uh, but with all that said, I do hope you all have an absolutely beautiful weekend, and goodbye.